Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper, and today is officially episode one of Coppersmith Cook and uh, living in our house of copper. So besides the technical videos that I do on coppersmithing and technique and the videos that are just cooking and just cookware, um, I'm going to be starting this series as, on top of what I already do. So you're still gonna get videos of just coppersmithing and still gonna get videos of just recipes. But a few times a month, we're gonna kinda do House of Copper, Coppersmith Cook um, living. And so it's old school traits meets old school life with all the other things mixed into it. And I definitely wanna hear from you guys as we go on what you might want me to expound upon, certain things that we do that you want more details on, and we'll do other videos of that. But um, we'll start here with episode one, and we'll see how it goes. So today is like day 10 of the homeschooling with, um, with the COVID-19 uh, homeschooling closed down. So we finished the lessons, even though it's technically spring break, and we're doing chicken chores. Um, two of our birds are new layers, which means they're struggling with the egg laying thing, and it means chicken surgery to make sure that their butts stay covered in feathers or at least black tar so that the other birds don't pick at their butts. Um, <laughs> So my kids, Will, Hannah, and Jack are joining me out here um, and our birds, which are um, uh, Cave, because she's dark like a cave, and Sally, because my youngest is not imaginative, and uh, Ishkirka, which is Polish for sparkle. Um, my dad is all about chickens, and he's wondering when we're, we're going to get rid of some of our clucks. He thinks Cave is a cluck, which was his word for a chicken that no longer lays eggs which I think is a made up word from old school farm life. But now we've been taking cave and calling her a cluck, whether or not that's accurate. She clearly doesn't like that term. Anyway, um, <laughs> here we go with chicken chores. No, you can show me your eggs. Okay, go put those inside, please. Inside? Just put them in the house and come back out. We gotta do chicken surgery. Yeah, that's their vitamins. Can you please give it to them? She just has a little bit. No, Mom. Oh, yeah. Here. I would like to pick Cave up. Well, you, you can pick Cave up. Sally? Uh, I got her for you. I don't, I'm really... Right. Let her go to the seeds, and then I'll grab her. She just doesn't want me to do her butt. Hannah, Hannah, uh, let me get Sally. That's Sally the... <sighs> Sally? That one. Sally, we need to do your butt. Just say no, she's. Hey, Jack, can you give me the sprayer? Does it hurt for you? No. Jack, give me the sprayer. How bad is your butt? It's not too bad, but. <laughs> All right, so every day I spend half of it. Um, when I don't have the kids home, I spend half of it at home um, writing and the rest of the time in the shop and then the rest of the time doing house stuff like picking rock and taking care of my kids and running them to things and making food. Um, so we're in the shop today and actually today I am finishing up some custom dog bowls um, that someone asked to have me make out of copper to a custom size. So I first had to um, design them um, using the uh, mathematical uh, thing called finding the frustrum of a cone. I have other videos on how to do this um, because it's a really complicated long process and um, is of course impossible to do exactly how uh, you might need to make it because every design is different. But today we are soldering the base onto this bowl um, and also the sides. And when you're using copper, you need to use both a soldering torch and a blow torch because the heat dissipates so fast that a regular soldering torch does not heat the copper up. The copper pulls the heat from the seam so fast that you are unable to keep it hot enough, long enough for the solder to run and for the molecular bonding to happen between the tin and the copper. I also at the same time have to hold down the top onto the base to make them sit very tightly together with extra pressure so that um, they have a nice, tight, even, pretty looking seam. I will then, once the whole thing is hot, 
pull the seam, the two seams on the side up and over the top, and we will have a waterproof water and food bowl. So here we go. I use an of glove, like like an oven mitt from the food section. Oven things. Now, first I'm gonna tack it so I have better control. I have watered down flux. And I apply it wherever I want to Get it down. Well, it's been a day of chickens and copper shop stuff, and now it's time to eat. And I'm not gonna do a big thing on how to cook in copper so much as just this is what we're making and um, what we're baking in tin line copper tonight since that is my go-to for most meals. Um, so I made ratatouille tonight and I did it without using oil. Um, I actually substituted cabbage for the red peppers in um, in the recipe because um, I have red peppers in the house and I wanted to keep it healthy. But, um, so that's what I did. And then I, I cooked it in the tinline copper and then baked it in the tinline copper. And a lot of people don't realize that you can bake in copper, but you can. So we're gonna eat, um, so I'm gonna get it out of the oven. So there you have it, Coppersmith Cook and the in the House of Copper. Um, there's a, a bit of everything. We'll do some more. We do a lot of crazy things. Um, everything from making your own medicines and a lot of gardening and wood projects to, um, you know, what I call my witchy way of life, which is um, doing things very old school. Um, we're even going to take the video cameras with us when we are allowed to do rendezvous again. So um, you'll get to see how we camp when it is, if it's 1829, and how we cook and um, how we use copper. Um, and I'm sure I will um, get you in the shop with Bob and me as well. Anyway, thank you for watching this first episode and we will see you again for the next one.